Good afternoon. It is a busy Thursday. There's a lot to cover. We start with some health news because monkeypox is now officially a public health emergency. The Biden administration made that declaration this afternoon as cases top 6,600 nationwide. The cases have been growing ever since the first diagnosis in mid-May. Monkeypox has been found in every state except Montana and Wyoming. Several states have already declared monkeypox a health emergency, including New York, California, and Illinois. So far, there have been 79 cases of the virus in Colorado, five of those just this month. 41 years to the day after Sylvia Quayle was murdered in her home in Cherry Hills Village, the man convicted of killing her was sentenced. In late June, a jury found David Anderson guilty of first degree murder. Well, today the judge in the case called Anderson's actions despicable. And here with more is Nine News crime and justice reporter Matt Jablo. I feel her presence all the time. Over the past 41 years, ever since her younger sister was brutally murdered, Joe Hammett has had some bad days. In the beginning, it was really hard. Today, however, was not one of those days. I feel really good today. Justice is served. On August 4th, 1981, 34-year-old Sylvia Quayle was raped and shot to death in her Cherry Hills Village home. The case was cold for 40 years until February of last year, when police arrested 62-year-old David Anderson at his workplace in Nebraska. Investigators say they were led to Anderson by genetic genealogy, a recent advance in DNA analysis. And he was literally the monster outside your door. During sentencing on Thursday, the lead detectives on the case described the viciousness of the crime. Judge Darren Volley weighed in as well. It is difficult to conceive of conduct more despicable than that. Judge Volley then sentenced Anderson to life in prison with the possibility of parole after 20 years. Do you miss her still? Oh, every day, every day. Afterwards, Joe Hammett reflected on her sister's life. She was a wonderful person. She was full of life, happy, um, creative. And said at long last, her killer will pay for what he did. It's beyond me to look at him and think, how could a human being do that to another human being? It's very sad that she can't be here. I miss her every day, but in lieu of that, justice was served. Anderson did not comment during sentencing today. His lawyers say they plan to appeal the verdict. Kim and Tom. Boy, there's a lot of history there, but you can tell that uh, in some ways, some of the family members have made a lot of progress with, with all that's happened just in the last couple of years. Her sister told me today, Tom, that it was indeed very be difficult at the beginning, but over time, they've learned to live with uh, Sylvia's loss. An end to a sad story. All right, Matt, thanks. Inglewood police say they won't release body camera video of a deadly shooting involving their officers until a gag order is lifted. Matthew Mitchell's loved ones are waiting on that video, anything that can give them some answers. In the meantime, though, they want you to know more about who he was. And Nine News reporter Noel Brennan spoke with Matthew's girlfriend this morning. It's the first photo that we ever took together. She can muster the words. And I miss him a lot right now. But Jennifer Coder carries too much pain to show her tear-filled face. He was just such a good guy. Just the best. Everything she'd like to share, she wears. Matthew had given me three different rings. Mine says his queen and his says her king. Matthew Mitchell ruled Jennifer's heart since high school. I just wanted to decorate myself with his love and the things he's given me. I always wear them because it keeps me with him even before all of this happened. On July 24th, Matthew was inside a home in Englewood with his brother as police responded to a 911 call. Englewood police say Matthew's brother shot at officers who fired back at the home. Matthew was killed, but police won't say by whom. I want people to know that he didn't deserve this. He deserved so much better. And I was planning on giving him such a good life. And now there's so many things that he's not going to be able to experience. Jennifer doesn't know what comes next. I don't want it to be real. But wherever she goes, she'll keep Matthew close. I don't think I'll take these rings off. Noel Brennan, 9 News.
Jennifer and Matt had been together for four and a half years. She says they were making plans for the rest of their lives. A man accused in a deadly hit and run crash in Denver won't be allowed behind the wheel of a car. A judge granting a request for maximum home confinement today for 23 year old Taylor Lindsay. The judge said it was a quote fairly unusual and highly restrictive supervision level. Lindsay's accused of killing 30 year old Jake Johnson in the hit and run crash at 40th and Pena on Saturday night. His bond is set at $50,000 cash only. Lindsay will be back in court for a preliminary hearing on August 24th. Let's take a live look outside. Not really a cloud in the sky. I feel like we touched 100 in some places. Not that I know, but it, it feels darn close. It felt that way, but uh, bad news for you. There are a couple of clouds in the sky. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't count Several. them all. I'm going to go. Well, way off in the distance, there are a few more. There, there are 11 actual clouds in the sky uh, and then some billowing in the distance. Danielle, uh, can you arbitrate this? I mean, uh, you just kind of have to squint, Kim. I'm with you. <laughs> I, I, it looks more blue. They're than far away. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> but even if I'm right, I'm kind of being a jerk about it, right? Just a little, yeah. Tom. Yeah, just I checking. Mean, come on. And he is a little bit right. Okay. <laughs> Too funny, you guys. Okay, it wasn't quite 100 degrees, but we did land in the mid to upper 90s across much of the front range today. 42 days in the 90s so far. About 95 currently out of DIA, 98 in Greeley, some 70s in Kremlin, off towards Sawatch, 97 in Grand Junction, too. The heat is on at least for one more day, and then some relief is in sight. Some mid 90s around Centennial, Littleton at 97 with 70s in Blackhawk through Netherland, about 86 in Estes Park. The thunderstorms, they are out there. The clouds, they are out there. They're just not really around Denver, which is just fine. Around the San Juans, we are looking at a few scattered showers, but again, here for the metro area, up into the foothills, just a couple of clouds. Most of the action around Telluride through Lake City, just starting to push across far south central Colorado. Nothing really severe, though. As we go throughout the evening, maybe one or two isolated showers around dinner time into Douglas County. Everything really stays south of the city, and then it pushes out by about 11 p.m. Looking ahead toward this evening here in the metro area. The winds will be kicking up quite a bit tomorrow. Uh, that's going to be the day that we're close to 100 degrees near record heat on our hands. And then looking ahead toward the weekend, we'll have a good chance for some scattered showers and thunderstorms, a bit of a cool off. We'll chat all about it when I see you in about 15 minutes. We want to take you to live uh, helicopter pictures at the Mall of America in Minnesota right now. The reason we're going there is there are reports that a shooting has happened in the mall. At least gunfire has taken place. Now, the mall is confirming on Twitter that the mall is considered under lockdown and police confirming just a few minutes ago that the department does have numerous officers on scene working what they're calling an active incident inside the mall. This mall is really a destination. It's it's the biggest mall in America in Bloomington, Minnesota. There are attractions and rides and restaurants and everything else. So it's a massive building there. The Associated Press is reporting videos on social media up here. This is just social media to show at least three gunshots at this point. We haven't had police confirm anything officially, so we'll stay on top of it and mm -hmm. let you know. Yeah, we are getting reports now of three gunshots being fired in one tenant workspace. So uh, again, it is an evolving situation. We're trying to get the best information for you. We will continue to do so and keep you posted on this at the Mall of America as it uh, comes into the newsroom. So leave it right here on Nine News. WNBA star Brittany Griner has, sentenced to, has been sentenced to nine years in jail, convicted of struggling drugs into Russia. Yeah, the smuggling also saw her fine $16,000. She was accused of trying to smuggle in less than a gram of cannabis oil in a vape pen when at the Moscow airport in February. Griner pled guilty last month to the drug charges. Today in court, she apologized, asking for leniency, saying that she did not mean to break Russian law and that it was an honest mistake. Of course, the verdict comes with most seeing her being used as a political pawn in the country's war with Ukraine. A possible prisoner swap has been in the works that would bring Briner and Paul Whelan home. President Biden said today's lengthy sentence was, quote, unacceptable and called on Russia to release her immediately. Just in the last hour, a jury in Austin, Texas, has ordered Alex Jones to pay two Sandy Hook parents more than $4 million for his calling the 2012 massacre a hoax. Scarlett Lewis and Neil Heslin, whose son Jesse died alongside 19 of his classmates and six educators back in 2012 at the school, had been seeking $150 million for defamation and intentional infliction of emotional distress. The jury had the case for less than a day. 
While this phase is now done, a separate trial in which punitive damages will be discussed is now expected as soon as tomorrow. Punitive damages are awarded when the court finds the defendant's behavior to be especially offensive. Jones has already been found liable for defaming the families of Sandy Hook victims, and this is the first of three trials to determine how much he must pay for spreading those lies. Speaking of Alex Jones, he may soon have another set of legal issues. The January 6th Select Committee says it wants those newly exposed text messages sent and received by Jones, since they may be related to that investigation as well. The shocking revelation came in court yesterday when the attorney for parents in the Sandy Hook defamation trial said that he was sent two years of Jones' cell phone contents, apparently by mistake. The judge in the case said those messages caught Jones in at least one lie under oath. The judge denied a request by Jones' lawyer to have 10 days to review the messages and advised him to instead find a valid legal argument that would prevent those texts from being shared with the January 6th committee and others. Today, jurors visited Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School, where 17 people died in the 2018 mass shooting in Parkland, Florida. They are deciding the sentence for the shooter who pleaded guilty. He did not attend this site visit. The school has been sealed off since that day, Valentine's Day 2018. Jurors were instructed to avoid touching or moving anything. They were also told not to speak until the viewing was complete. The jurors explored on their own and at their own pace and moved as a group from floor to floor. Jurors returned to the courtroom this afternoon to hear one more victim impact statement before the state rested its case. Jurors will either recommend a sentence of life in prison or the death penalty. 11 pro golfers filed an antitrust lawsuit against the PGA yesterday after being suspended from the tour over their involvement in the Saudi-backed Live League. Yeah, some of the biggest names in the game, Phil Mickelson, Bryson DeChambeau, and others saying that the PGA is carrying out what they call an orchestrated plan to try and stifle the competition. In July, we learned the Department of Justice was investigating whether or not the PGA Tour may have broken antitrust laws to fight back against the Live. That series, of course, bankrolled by Saudi Arabia's public investment fund. Critics say that is simply a matter of sports washing, a vehicle for the country to improve its image in the face of that country's record of human rights. Tonight, the NFL preseason kicks off with the Hall of Fame game from Canton, Ohio. It's part of the enshrinement week of the hall, leading up to a bunch of events for the induction of the 2022 Hall of Fame class. Then one of the inductees this year is a former CU legend, Cliff Branch. Branch put up really modest numbers as a receiver for the Buffs, but he shined as a sprinter on the track team, setting an NCAA record, championship record in the 100 meters in 1972. His speed would translate well to the NFL, where he spent 14 years with the Raiders, winning three Super Bowls and being named first team all pro three times. He died in 2019 at the age of 71 and was posthumously selected for enshrinement into the Hall of Fame in February. Had a chance to visit with Dave Logan today. Dave was still in high school when Cliff Branch was, uh, was catching the ball up in Boulder before Dave went up there. I asked him, I said, why were Cliff Branch's numbers so low when he was College. up at CU and he became such a star in the NFL? He says, well, it's because he was playing at CU and we, we didn't throw the ball that much. So, <laughs> oh. so Al Davis saw something in Cliff Branch that maybe Eddie Crowder hadn't quite figured out or maybe he didn't have the quarterbacks that, uh, that he would later maybe see with the Raiders. The yeah. yeah, for that deep threat that he was. <laughs> go, go long. New details today about the warrants that led up to Breonna Taylor's death. What the officer and former officers are being charged with and why, plus our legal expert is here to break down the new information we learned today. We're going to take a live look outside where, yes, I do see a few clouds. Tom, not enough, though, on a very hot day. <laughs> Tomorrow, I think, is going to be hotter, though.